Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. It is absolutely a beautiful morning already. I'm a little later at getting my videos out, so of course the sun's higher in the sky than normal, but it is a, it's just a, a simply a beautiful day already. Uh, it's supposed to be nice and warm, bright and sunny. Uh, just the kind of day that, that most of us would absolutely enjoy, which is nice. It's nice to have the final day on this planet, the final day for humanity, uh, to be such a beautiful day around here. I, I mean, at least that's what some people are saying. Uh, today is the eclipse day. And um, according to some, the world is coming to an end. And you know what? Who knows? They could be right. I, I'd say by the end of the day, we'll know if it's the, the, the people that's been talking this up online for weeks and weeks now that it's all going to crash and burn and come to an end. Or those of us that say that the only thing that's probably going to happen is either just people behaving stupid or the government faking some kind of thing to, to, to do something. But anyways, um, that is happening today. And, um, you know, they say, I've, I've, they say officially not to look at the eclipse. They say it can damage your eyes. But then I've heard other people say, oh, no, that's a conspiracy theory, too. It's a conspiracy that because the, the, the energy and blah, 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 that it's actually good for you. But, uh, well, I guess for the sake of the legal disclaimer, we'll stick with don't look at the eclipse without any kind of protection. Um, anyways. I'm, I'm really honestly, truly not that concerned with it. But um, I do want to talk about some things that are interesting changes, it seems, when it comes to the war, uh, the war in, in the Europe, uh, Eastern Europe, and then also some things that seem in, seemingly to possibly shift uh, in, in the Pacific with Taiwan and China. Uh, so be, because this, these could have serious ramifications. Um, First of all, it does. It appears that there is a a gradual increase in 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 whatever is happening between Russia in Ukraine and and NATO. Um, Russia claims that they have pretty solid evidence now that the the people that bombed that I I don't, I don't even remember the name of it now that that big symphony building or whatever in in moscow you all know the one i'm talking about a couple weeks ago but they have evidence they say that uh the people that orchestrated that and trained those people were ukrainian special forces um i mean i it, it could be a total lie but uh that's that's what they claim and so if if they feel that they have solid enough evidence that just gives them even more fuel to to retaliate even stronger against Ukraine. So there's that, um, and and that could be an escalation. It appears as if Ukraine has attacked the uh, the the big nuclear power plant, Zap Zapopora. I can't pronounce it. I don't even really want to try. It's the largest nuclear power plant in Europe uh, under Russian control, and and the the Ukrainians apparently have sent some attack drones in and, and hit very very close to one of the nuclear reactors and it's damaged it and and there's there's this worry that there could be some you know there's a potential for meltdown i don't know that it's a high probability but but there's a potential there uh and it's it's even so much so that the the un's uh, commission on nuclear energy has has called for a you know, safe zone at nuclear power plants to not be firing bombs and drones near or around nuclear power plants because it's extremely dangerous. And it's, it, it's, it's possibly entering into that, that neighborhood if things go south of nuclear war. And the reason being if, if Ukraine strikes a nuclear power plant, so maybe they haven't dropped a nuclear weapon, but they cause it to have a meltdown and then a big radiological disaster, um, could that be enough for Russia to say, okay, well, we'll cause our own radiological disaster by dropping a nuke on your head? It's quite possible. In fact, that's been the discussion, it seems, behind the scenes in Russia. So are we headed, getting closer to a nuclear war scenario? Maybe not us directly, but at least on this planet. Possible. Uh, now, Ukraine is denying that they dropped the, the drones on, you know, so maybe it's the CIA. Maybe the CIA put those drones out there. I don't know. Um, but the point is, is that things are continuing, continuing to escalate between Russia and Ukraine. 
uh, which has been going on all along. You, uh, Zelensky's now back to to begging from United States Congress members and stuff, saying that if if we we as an Americans, if we don't continually fund, <clears throat> excuse me, I was up half the night last night and uh, on a call, and I'm just really congested. I was out and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, um, that if we as Americans, if we don't continue to fund this war for for the Ukrainians that that Ukraine will lose and so that he's been you know hitting that that beating that drum again that, that we've got to send them billions tens of billions of dollars uh, over there to to do that uh, now <clears throat> Europe many of the European countries <clears throat> are saying that they're just going to take the money that was seized this came out this past week which in my opinion, I could definitely see that being an escalation. So if you remember when the start of all this war happened, um, NATO seized, NATO countries seized a lot, like I think it was in the hundreds of billions of dollars of Russian money that was in, you know, banks and stuff that NATO had access to. And they seized that and that money's just been sitting there. And it's something like a half a billion dollars or more. And so now they're saying that they're going to use that money to, to win the war and to rebuild Ukraine. They're going to take Russia's money and use that. If that happens, um, that could definitely be a, a serious escalation. So that's the kind of stuff that's happening all the while you've been focused on the eclipse for the last few days. Um, now let's, let's flip-flop to the other side of the planet. Yes, the, the big round globe. I know, I just made a lot of people upset at me. Boy, my email inbox is going to blow up today. Um, anyways, yes, the big round ball. Other side of it, uh, Taiwan, China. <clears throat> so, um, our government met with Chinese government this week, had some big top-level meetings, and some things have kind of changed in the, the rhetoric, at least a little bit. Number one, to start off with, um, the United States announced a very large loan uh, that's going to be given to a company to develop um, microchips fa facilities. Now, if you if you guys remember, no, that's part of the big reason why Taiwan is so critical. I mean, yes, their their location is strategic, but also they're they produce the vast majority of of microchip processors on the whole planet. I mean, it's like 80, 90 percent of them. It's it's very high, and so if China gains control of that that you know island, then they control all the microchip processing for the planet, which as we know is, is critical with all of this World Economic Forum stuff and everything, you know, the digital revolution that's, that's taking place. So um, it's interesting that all of a sudden the United States is, is dumping billions and billions of dollars into us now producing microchips, almost like we're trying to, you know, create plan B maybe. Um, also this week, uh, Anthony Blinken, or last week, I guess it was, Anthony Blinken stated that, that the United States absolutely is not in favor of Taiwanese independence. None whatsoever. And so it's starting to look like, possibly, and I know this is a very thin possible, that the United States is trying to set up a situation to where we can kind of back out and, and, and not really fight China for Taiwan. That we can say, well, we've got our own microprocessor stuff being built. Uh, you know, it, technically Taiwan is part of China. And, and well, maybe we need to back out of this. Um, now, if that's the case, and I understand that right now that's still a big if. But if that's the case, I think personally it's, it's profound evidence that China really owns and controls the United States and uh, the White House, Washington, D.C., that they, they have so much control over our currency with the amount of debt that they own of us, uh, with this BRICS gold-backed dollar that they're trying to develop, with the fact that the, the vast majority of manufacturing and products and, and uh, you know, materials to manufacture products all come from China. I mean, even in things that are still manufactured in the United States, so much of the raw materials come from China. And China controls the vast majority of raw materials on the whole planet. Um, you know, rare earth met metals and minerals, they, they control so much of that. There's, there's so much that China, met medicines, pharmaceuticals, there's so much that China controls. And we've been talking about this. I've been talking about this. Many others have been talking about this for years. That that's they, they've they've kind of got it. They've got a they got a tight grip of us on, in our our very sensitive areas. 
and <clears throat> we may be able to defeat them militarily although that's starting to change i think because if you look at the development of Ch uh, chinese military you know their navy and stuff I, I get it it may not be quite up to standard as the united states but they're able to way out produce us they're producing three times uh, their naval ships at a rate of three times what we can so it's it could be a situation like us versus nazi germany where they their, their equipment was far superior than ours in world war ii but we outproduced them and that's what China, I think, their goal is. They're not so much worried about the, the, the very, very best quality. They're just wanting to have quantity. And that can work too. And so when we see all this stuff happening, it looks like a scenario, maybe just the beginnings. And it's, it's so much in the beginnings that I could be completely off on this. But it does look like the beginning of a scenario is being set up that where America can kind of back out, back down, and, and potentially avoid some kind of massive World War III scenario with them and just kind of pass off the, you know, baton to China. And China now becomes the new world leader, which is where most of us think that this has been headed anyways. That Xi Jinping owns Bi uh, Biden and, and is, is the, the top, the real top dog when it comes to the United Nations and World Economic Forum stuff. But that, that does seem to be the, the, that a scenario could be developed to fit that um and be, because the the amount of destruction that could happen if we went to war with china it, it would be absolute it'd be a it'd be a bloodbath um and you know you could make the statement that well if if we end up not going to war with china i guess that's a good thing well i guess so possibly but um they would own us. They would control us. There would be so much uh, that I, for us to not to be knocked off the world leader position, and for China to be the world leader, and for us to be basically subservient to China, um, it creates a scenario here in the United States that I don't think that most Americans can even conceive. Um, that you know, look, look at how we as the United States has been able to pressure and influence other countries around the world for the last. 50, 60 years, China would be able to do the same thing to us. Um, and China absolutely wants to dominate the planet. That, that's one thing I've said many times. Russia and Vladimir Putin has never, ever, ever gave any indication whatsoever, not, not even a sliver of an indication that they have any desires to control the world. They don't. They want to control Imperial Russia. They want to control what was once Imperial Russia, all their original lands, and that's it. They have no desire to control the world. China, on the other hand, and Xi Jinping has made multiple, multiple statements that they intend to control the world. They intend to be the world leader. They want to be at the top of the food chain and they want to be controlling the world. Um, and so that's a big difference. And, and it's going to change the dynamics of what it means. Even if we don't go into some kind of grid down collapse, EMP, uh, all this, th that could be why we're watching so many illegals flood into this country. It's not so much for them to do, especially the Chinese ones, it's not so much for them to do terroristic acts. It may just be so that they can just kind of overwhelm us and, and bring us down to a third world level so that China rises up and is the new the new boss. So these are these are all possible scenarios and something to definitely be aware of and all reasons why we should be preparing. Uh, I've told you this nearly every day, every video. These are all certainly good reasons of why we should be getting our houses in order, folks. You need to be preparing yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and we'll see if we survive this eclipse. I'm quite sure that we will. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you now.